without the Lord, mm -hmm. we would not have any hope. Right. And um, I think the thing that I like the most about Jesus is that, uh, you know, he shows us our ugly, but he doesn't, like, hate us right. for it. Right. Right. He already sees it. I think that's something that I'm actually really afraid of is people, like, seeing me. You know, I'm not perfect, and I, I get scared that people are going to see me, and then they'll just, um, and I feel like I'll just get rejected if people see that I'm, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Not right. that I come off perfect, but just people see me, and they think I'm something that I'm not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just like how, even though, I mean, the Lord sees the ugly, ugly, I mean, the intentional ugly, not the accidental ugly, like, I meant to do that. <laughs> And he doesn't, like, change. His love doesn't dissipate or right. lessen. Right. Because we're not up to standard today. And um, I guess, even though I, I'm still struggling to just surrender everything that we need mm -hmm. and everything that we've ever wanted is in Christ. Right. And... Um, yeah, I guess, I and mean, we all are alive, you know, when he, every time I'm out and I see people who are just so hardened to the truth, they're so, they so hate God, I just have to say thank you, not that I'm not like them, like I'm better than them, but just thank you that the Lord chose me. Yes. He chose to turn the light on in my life, because if he didn't, I would, it, it would never have happened to me, ever. Right, same here. So... Yeah, so I'm just really thankful, and I get all confused. I'm like, why did he pick me out of so many other people? I don't know, but I can only be like, well, thank you, he knows. So, exactly. Yep. And uh, even though it's hard for us to know this, because we live in America, <laughs> we have a lot of more privileges and luxuries right. in this country than like a third world country, you know. If everything, literally everything that we have, was ripped away from us, I think somebody said it earlier, we could still have joy. And I just don't think other people, our willpower, it, it dries out. Sheer, you know, positive energy, that dries out. You know, trying to be optimistic, that dries out. So we can have, a, we have like a source for joy and contentment that doesn't dry out. Right. It doesn't leave us. That's also awesome because this life is crazy and it does put us through the ringer and it's not guaranteed that we won't lose everything. It's not guaranteed that we won't, you know, end up in a hospital bed for the rest of our life. It's just not guaranteed. Right. So to know that we, we have the means to go through our suffering. Right. In a way that the world doesn't, we have to rely on themselves. I'm thankful that I have a power outside of myself because I don't have I don't I don't have have it in me to make it on my own. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, yeah. Go I on. want to say that I want to say that uh, first of all, all of us we are so blessed that we believe. Because yes. A lot of people it's just that's just blessed are those who believe. You got to remember, a lot of people are not going to believe. Right. They're not going to believe. And we are blessed that we believe, you guys. We're blessed that we believe, number one. Number two, um, there's a reason why we are alive at this hour. Yes. There's a reason why God kept us through all our hurt and pain. And when we still go through hurt and pain and trials and tribulations. But we are his. Yes. And another thing I want to say is uh, when God looks at us, he don't see He don't see our faults or nothing. He sees us completely uh, uh, the way we are in heaven, the way we're going to be in heaven. He sees us like that already. He sees us without fault, without blemish, without weaknesses. He, When he looks down from his holy habitation from heaven, he sees us covered in the blood. He sees us blameless, faultless, guiltless. He already It's already done. When Jesus said it was finished, it's finished. So we're, we're perfect in him. Yeah, we still have issues in our physical body on the earth, but he doesn't see that. He sees that we are his. So he loves us unconditionally. And we are 
uh, anointed, we are established, and we are sealed. That means that's powerful. We're sealed. That we got. We're sealed. We're sealed by God. We're His. We're His. Regardless of how we feel about ourselves, regardless what we go through, our weakness, and all that, we're sealed. We are His. So we are so blessed to know and to have the truth. I'm telling you, everybody's not going to receive the truth. Blessed are those who believe. And that's what I keep hearing in my spirit. Blessed. We are blessed that we believe, you guys, that we believe, that we believe. And so having that belief and knowing the truth and knowing Jesus and believing in him, now we got a job to do. Yes. We got a job to do now. It's not, so we got to, you know, and I'm learning that we got to stop so much focusing on ourselves. Woo! I know we all got issues, but we got to put, okay, Jesus already dealt with all that. Turn all those issues over to him and get out there and uh, be a light. We are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. Right. And we got to get busy. And mm -hmm. just like Pat, you don't physically get out, but you're, but, you're, but you're being a light doing what you're doing. And everybody that's on this line, I'm sure God uses everybody differently, but he uses you guys, whether you realize it or not. Every day he's using you to be a light and a blessing to somebody out there. That's right. So there's somebody out there that's waiting for for us. That's right. There's somebody out there that's waiting for the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got it. It's in us. So what I realized also is that he is faithful. He is faithful to his word. Yes. That word. That word. And what I'm realizing more too, uh, as I get older, as this thing is winding down, is that when fear tries to grip me and worry and stress tries to grip me, I run to the word. I run to the open my Bible because it's like when I read that word, it just it takes care of it because his word is true. You can't lie. That's right. So that word gives you that peace and that comfort to know. I'm stressing right now, Lord. Fear is trying to grip me, Lord. Worry is trying to overtake me, Lord. This is trying to overtake me. And then I go to that word. Fear not. Right. That's not your heart be troubled. Right. I'm with you. Worry, the, the, and don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about a thing. Right. No worries. No worries. God's peace guards my heart and mind. That's my favorite one. No worries. No worries. God's peace guards my heart and mind. He takes care of me and my cat. <laughs> <laughs> he takes care of me and the cat. Yeah, And my family go. and all these guys. But we got to talk to him like that. He loves us. And just have that personal, like she said, that personal relationship with him. Just talk to him. Let him, like, let him know. He knows what's already in your heart anyway. Right. He knows the heart. He looks at the heart. And is that heart. All of y'all that's on the phone right now, your heart is with him because you wouldn't even be involved if your heart wasn't seeking him and you loved him. So he loves you. He right. loves us. Right. And he got us. We just got to really trust him every day, no matter how crazy it gets. Because it's going to get crazy. But we got to stay in that word. Right. In that word. In that word. Because when we can't be with Pat and be on this line... We better have that word for ourselves inside of us. Exactly. We better know that word and have that word inside of us. And, and to remind ourselves and speak to him and just say, Lord, you can't lie. You can't lie. And you promise you're going to take care of me. You promise you're going to protect, protect, protect me. You promise me even to the end till I take my last breath. Right. That you're with me. So I trust that. I trust that because you can't lie. And that gives me the strength. Mm -hmm. To get up and do what I got to do every day. Right. It gives us all the strength to mm -hmm. do what we got to do. Yes. Because he can't lie. Right. His word is true. That word. The word. The word. Stay in the word. To the end. Till we take our last breath. Speak that word. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's what's going to hold us. Uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost. Which gives us strength. And the power, like the came on Pat today. That was the Holy Spirit that came on you, Pat. Mm -hmm. that, that, that had you, what came on you. So I feel it now. It's on you right now. I feel it coming through the phone. And it's coming on everybody. The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So powerful. That's, and that, and we're going to need that power like we never needed before, y'all. Amen. That's so they, true. Because it's going to get intense. It's going to get intense down here. Mm -hmm. But we got the power inside of us until we, like I said, until we take our last breath. That's to right. To live as Christ, to die as gain. Right. To live as Christ, to die as gain. Right. To live as Christ, to die as gain. Right. So what's in the middle? Uh, <laughs> we win. So get up. Get out. That's it. 
That's it. Right. And be a light. And be a light. And, yes. And don't worry about people we respond to you and how they, we don't care about that. You know, the devil is busy. The demons, they don't want these people saved. He don't want you to tell them talk. He don't want us mm-hmm. talking about Christ to people. Mm-hmm. We don't care. Shut up, devil. Shut up, Satan. Shut up. That's right. Now, so I'm, keep on. Oh, I'm and if they reject us and if they get crazy, we bind and take authority and keep on witnessing. That's right. And in a light. And That's right. Trust him with your own personal life, and then he got us. He got you. Right. Right. Let May me. I say something really quick. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Go on. Go on. Um, I just wanted to share an insight that I got from this book. Uh, I've been I've been reading. Uh, your dad was talking about how the chapter was called "There Is No Plan B," and he was really trying to drive the point that sometimes we think. We, like, it, it, we think it's optional to share the gospel with people. We think it's optional to open our mouths when there's a clear door to say something. Mm-hmm. And we think it's optional when we uh, to pursue these doors with people. Mm-hmm. And he said there is no plan B. We are the ones who've been called to speak. We're, we are the plan for someone to hear the gospel. Right. I and mean, we hope Secretly, that somebody else will say it, or we keep going. Oh, maybe another time. We could miss our chance. They right. could miss their chance for right. eternity. And um, thinking about that really makes the 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 Great Commission. It's it's more of a serious responsibility on on us as individuals. It's not like it's, not, it's very like it should be kind of. Heavy on your heart, not to make you more depressed, but it, because it's important. Right. And so, you know, and I'm speaking to myself in this, but, you know, I guess in these last, these last minutes, we should really reprioritize our lives and make sure that, that this great mission is not optional. It's not on our time, but it's at any time, and that we are always open to being used. Thank you. Amen. 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 Well, I was thinking about the disciples, Pat. Remember? Even when Jesus told the disciples, he said, Now, go. That's right. Go. Go to the world. And preach the fact that he told them to go. He said, You go. You, he, he said, When you go, don't take nothing with you. Well, of course, you know, back those back in those days. But uh, he even told them, Go. And that was back then. And they thought the end was then. But it wasn't. That was just the beginning. That's right. That's right. That was their purpose. They got saved. They had a relationship with Jesus. They loved him. They had intimacy with him. And then he wants them to go and be an extension of him. And that's what we are. We are an extension of Christ. We are his witnesses. We are his ambassador. We are co-workers with him. That's right. Exactly. And we are and we are to go mm-hmm. and go and be busy about winning souls for Christ. That's what we should be. That's, that's it. And that's why we are alive. While we ain't dead, we are alive. Mm-hmm. We're alive at this hour to, to, to fulfill the Great Commission. That's right. And yeah, we we are his hands, we are his feet, we are his mouth. Amen. I remember years ago when I was uh when I was go it's still in Pasadena. And uh for thirteen years, actually fifteen when you add uh a Whittier, but I have done prison ministry for a total of about 15 years. And that was my favorite ministry back then because everybody that was in there, you could see that there were some that were just going just to kill the boredom. And there were some that were going because they knew they needed something more. And I felt like I reached inmates much more effectively than I reach church people because inmates have a real a reality check they know they need help <laughs> and you find how much more receptive people are when they're at the bottom of their game that's right and man. I think that's why Jesus says it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. Because when people are hungry, when people are hurting, when people are at their wit's end, 
Just like the season we're in now, where, pe where everything's going helter-skelter. There are a lot of people that are wondering, well, what do I do? Where do I turn? You know, how do I get through this? You know, what do I grab a hold to? And that's why we have to be quick. If we enter a conversation with anybody, we have to constantly inside ask God, show me where this conversation is to lead. Am I just to share my story or am I to try to get them to give their heart to Christ? Sometimes all you're called to do is plant the seed for some people. Some people, mm -hmm. oh, God knows who the one is that's going to lead them to Christ. And mm -hmm. that's why the Bible yeah. says some, some plant, others water. But it's God that gets the increase. So whatever Amen. you do, don't think it's on you to get the increase. It's never that way. Only God can get the increase. Mm -hmm. All you do is plant or you water, but you don't try to seal the deal like you're filling notches on your belt. It ain't about that, y'all. So anyway, I'm going to get into the word in a minute. If anybody else has anything, I'm going to give you a second. Other than that, I'm going to get into the word. 